Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. I'll read. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that, you may, so that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. And this is the word of God. Amen. At this time, Reverend Andrew Pack will lead us on a message on the first commandment with a promise. All right. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Happy Mother's Day. To all you mothers and some fathers. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Today is Mother's Day, right? Okay. But in Korea, it's Parents' Day. So we keep it as Parents' Sunday here. Uh, and on Mother's Day, as a pastor, I am obligated to preach on honoring your parents, right? So we just read from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. The title of today's message is The First Commandment with a Promise. First of all, you know, let's, let's give thanks to all of our mothers and our parents who raised us, whether if they're here or not, it doesn't matter, in our hearts, in our prayers. Let's give thanks for all of their love and sacrifice. Uh, that's what enabled us to be here today, right? But in today's text, the Bible tells us to honor our father and mother so that it may go well with us and live long on the earth. This is the first commandment, and I believe the only commandment in the Ten Commandments that comes with a promise. You know, in the Ten Commandments, it didn't say, do not steal, then you're going to get rich. It doesn't have promises like that, right? But this is the only one where it says, honor your father and your mother, and then it has a blessing promise that is attached to it. So I think that should lead us to understand that this is a very special commandment. I think the most special one out of all the Ten Commandments, right? So why did God give this promise of a blessing attached to this commandment only? So before we get to that, just a brief word on the Ten Commandments, right? A lot of people think the Ten Commandments are Old Testament, that it doesn't apply to us today anymore, that it's irrelevant to those of us that are living in the 21st century. But that is not the case. Jesus clearly told us that the Ten Commandments are still valid. So, for example, in Matthew chapter 15, um, verses 3 through 9, which was the text for this morning service, Jesus said, don't set aside this command to honor your parents because of human tradition. Uh, in in Jesus' day, they had something called a Corban, which is where they said, oh, I have set aside this amount of money or food or whatever to give to my parents, but then I gave it as an offering to God, so now I have nothing to give to my parents. That was a tradition called Corbin. So when they just said Corbin, just that word frees you from honoring your parents because I gave it to God. And Jesus said, that's not right. Okay? Don't use human traditions like this to set aside God's command. God said, honor your parents no matter what, right? So Jesus um, testified that the Ten Commandments are still valid for us. Also in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, these are Jesus' words. He said, do not think that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished, right? So Jesus came to fulfill the law, not to abolish them, okay? So the Ten Commandments are very important. And I think I've talked about this before, but just to remind all of us, you know, the Ten Commandments, there are ten of them. And the structure is that the first four deal with God. So one through four are commandments that deal with God-human relationships. 
Okay? So 1 through 4 are, are our commandments that deal with our relationship to God. And then 5 through 10 are human to human relationships. Okay, so 5 through 10 deal with uh, commandments that are regarding our relationship to each, each other. So why is this important? Because that is basically what the cross is all about. What is the cross? Well, with the cross you need a a vertical line and a horizontal line, right? The vertical line symbolizes our relationship to God. The horizontal line symbolizes our relationships to each other. So in order to fulfill the cross, Jesus fulfilled both of these requirements because the greatest commandments are what? They asked Jesus, and Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And then the second is just like that, love your neighbor as yourself. In these two commandments, the whole commandment, all the commandments are summarized. And those two commandments basically give us the cross. This is everything. This summarizes the whole Bible. If you could keep this, you've done it all. And that's what Jesus did for us, right? When Jesus came into this world, he honored Father God with all of his heart and soul, with his life, right? He never disobeyed God's command. He honored God the Father. And not only that, he loved his brothers and sisters and neighbors, all of us, as he would love himself. And that is why he gave his own body as a sacrifice for our sins, right? So he fulfilled both of these commandments in his life. Now, Today's topic is the fifth commandment, right? Number five. It's right at the center here, which says honor your father and your mother, right? So that commandment, I believe, is right here. The intersection between the God-human relationship and human-to-human relationship. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. So number one, the fifth commandment is the foundation for all commandments dealing with human relationships. And why is that? Well, who is the first person that you met in your life? Your mom, right? I mean, you came out of her, so you had to have met her, right? So the first person that you met is your mom or your parents, right? The first human relationship that you had in your life are your relationship with your parents. So that is the foundation to all other relationships, okay? That's the basis. So if you can learn to honor your parents, then you can learn to honor each other and have a good relationship with one another. So when the, when the family breaks down, that's when society also breaks down, right? Because the parent-child relationship is the basis for all human relationships. So we learned how to deal with other human beings through our parents. And not only that, we learn God's love from our parents, right? There is no human being that could mimic God's love, but they say that the mother's love for their children is the closest to God's love, right? So even if your parents didn't teach you anything your whole life, they still taught you how to love, okay? Okay? So that's why this is the most important relationship amongst the human-to-human -human relationships. That's why out of these six commandments, it comes first. You know, in the human-to-human -human relationship, the commandment regarding our parents comes first. And in today's text, it tells us that this is the first commandment with a promise, right? If you keep this commandment well, then you're going to do well here on earth and you're going to live long. That's God's promise. A blessing of longevity and blessing of prosperity. Doing well in all things is connected to this uh, commandment. So that's why this is, I believe, the greatest commandment in regard to our human relationships. And then secondly, oh, actually before we go on. So when, when the Bible tells us to honor your father and your mother, This is not just talking about your biological parents, okay? 
This includes all who are above you, whether in authority or in age or status or what have you. Okay? So it, it, that may be your boss at work. That may be the leader of the nation, uh, pastors in the church, your teachers, all of those people who are in place of authority above you, over you, should be regarded with this kind of honor. That's what the Westminster Catechism says, where it says, who are meant by father and mother in the fifth commandment? By father and mother in the fifth commandment are meant not only natural parents, but all superiors in age and gifts, especially such as by God's ordinance are over us in place of authority, whether in family, church, or commonwealth, right? So from your father and your mother, you move on out into society, and that's where you also want to honor those who are above you in, in place of authority. And if we could keep this commandment well, then all society will, will be a place of love and peace, right? But if this breaks down, then everything else starts to break down as well. You know, I, I used to have a friend in high school who would tell his mom to shut up. <laughs> that scared me. I was like, whoa, my mom would hit me if I did that. <laughs> you know what, ha what would happen if you did that in the Old Testament times? You should be glad you're not born in Old Testament times. Because if you look in Deuteronomy, what, what do you think will happen in Old Testament times? <laughs> in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 18 through 21. If you disobeyed your parents like that, what would they do? The Bible says, take them, drag them out to the city gate where the elders are seated, and do what? Stone them to death. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's what happened in Old Testament times. What do you guys think? Many American teenagers would be dead by now. <laughs> but, you know, we don't keep the law like that anymore. But this just goes to show how important it is to honor our parents, how important it was to God. Okay? So why was it so important to God? That's my second point. And it was important to God because... This commandment to honor our father and mother is a, is a link. So the fifth commandment is the link between the human relationship and the God and God relationship. So it's the link between us and God. When the Bible tells us to honor our parents, it's not only speaking of our physical parents, but ultimately it's pointing to our spiritual father in heaven, right? When Jesus came to teach us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer, how does it begin? It says, our father who art in heaven, right? So by honoring your father and your mother, you are also honoring our God in heaven, okay? So... The principle is this, in the Bible, if you claim to love God and yet you don't honor the parents whom you could see with your eyes, how can you truly honor or love God whom you cannot see? Right? That's impossible. But also, I could explain it like this. Our parents are like the channel through which God's blessing is given to us. God is the giver of life, but he gave our life to us through our parents, right? So they're the channel through which that came to us, the blessing. God is love, and who was the first person to teach that love to us? It was our parents who taught that love to us. So they were the channel of blessing that God chose to use to convey his blessings to us. Now, some human beings sometimes don't want a middleman, right? They want to get all the glory, right? But God is not like that. If God used them to bless us, 
He wants us to also honor them, and by so doing, we honor God as well. You see what I'm saying? So they're like in between God and us. By honoring them, we are in fact honoring God, right? That is what God's commandment is teaching us today. So that's why the Bible tells us to obey our parents in the Lord, right? In the Lord. I think that's very important. We need to obey our parents in the Lord, not outside of the Lord. You see, it's just the natural step that leads to God. But let's say, for example, if our parents are outside the Lord, we should still honor them, but we may not necessarily obey everything that they tell us because if they're teaching us things that are outside of the Lord, our first allegiance is to God. So we have to obey God first, right? But our honor to our parents has still got to be there. Honoring our parents is unconditional, But obedience is conditional. We obey them if they are in the Lord, right? So we honor our parents no matter what, but we obey our parents only in the Lord, right? So this is what the fifth commandment is teaching us today. And the promise was if you honor your parents, it's well-pleasing to God, so it's going to be a blessing to us. It's the first commandment with a promise. And we will have the blessing of longevity. Now, redemptive, historically speaking, what does this mean? Well, Adam fell because he did not honor his parents. Did you guys know that? Adam fell because he didn't honor his parents. If you look in Luke chapter 3, we have Jesus' genealogy, right? And it goes up. It goes backwards. It starts with Jesus, goes up to his father, Heli, or Joseph, and then Heli, etc., up, 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 up. And then in verse 38, it says, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, and then finally, son of God. So what does this mean? It means Adam's father was God in the Garden of Eden. And why did Adam fall? Why did he get kicked out of the Garden of Eden? Because he disobeyed his father's word. Right? So Adam broke the fifth commandment in the Garden of Eden. So Jesus came into this world as the second Adam. Right? He's called the last Adam or the second Adam. And he came to recover that fall by honoring our Father in heaven. When Jesus came into this world, the only name that he applied to God was Father. He never called God anything else but Father. He always called him Father. And he obeyed his Father's word completely, 100%. In John chapter 8, verse 29, he says, And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. In John 14, verse 31, he also said, So that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Right? Jesus said, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. And why did he do this? So that the world may know that he loves our Father in heaven. And in John chapter 12, verse 50, Jesus said, I know that his commandment, meaning the Father's commandment, is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. See? Jesus fully obeyed the Father's commandments while he was here on earth. And that's how he was able to recover from the fall. And that's how he was able to become our federal head, meaning our representative who could take our sins upon himself on the cross and atone for our sins. So that's why today, as we celebrate Mother's Day here in America, Parents' Day in Korea, wherever you may be, the month of May is a a month of the family. And through 
our family, we have learned about God and our relationship with each other. So in conclusion, basically, everything is about a relationship. It's all about a relationship. Our life of faith is a relationship with God. We need to have a personal relationship with God. Okay? We don't believe in a God that's just far away and aloof, doesn't care. We believe in a God who's personal God, who intervenes into our lives, who is concerned for what's going on, right? He wants to have a relationship with us. And then God also commanded that we have a good relationship with each other, right? That's what the cross is all about. So it's all about a relationship, right? And relationships take effort. It doesn't just happen. Even with your parents, it takes effort. You have to cultivate it. Don't just take it for granted, okay? You're going to think, oh, you know, my parents are always going to be there. They're not always going to be there. No. It's been 10 years since my mother passed away. Exactly, not exactly, but, you know, 10 years, almost, exactly. And so for 10 years, I've had no one to call mom. You guys, think about that right here, okay? It's it's not something that you should take for granted. You have to work on it right now, okay? And that goes with all your relationship. You have to cultivate it, okay? Now, so what's the key to all of these relationships? There's a key ingredient that could give you good relationships with everyone, including God, and that is called love. You know, in this day and age, this is a word that has been misused by so many people, right? It has degenerated into something, you know, at at the least it's just sex or uh, at most romance, right? But the Bible teaches that it's not that. Love is much more than that. In Greek, there are four words for love. Agape. Storge, phileo, not fish. You guys didn't get that? And eros. So these are the four words for love in Greek. Okay. The lowest is this right here. This is what would translate to erotic love in English or romantic love. And the Bible says that's the lowest kind of love. I mean, that's like the lowest. And then above that is phileo, which means like Philadelphia, it means brotherly love. Love amongst our brothers and sisters and even friends. Okay. And then storge is above that, which is basically love in your family. It's family love. You know, your parents, right? Your actual biological brothers and sisters. And then finally, there's agape love, which is God's love. And sometimes it's known as unconditional love, sacrificial love. That's agape love. That's the love that Jesus Christ bestowed upon us. Where he unconditionally sacrificed his own body and his own life to save us, right? But nowadays, when we think of love, most people just think of this right here. That's the problem, okay? But these are much more noble and higher kinds of love that the Bible teaches. And basically, what is agape love? To put it simply, it is sacrifice. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, Jesus sacrificed his own life for us while we're still sinners so that he may save us, right? So love is sacrifice. And who showed that kind of love to us? Our parents did. They sacrificed for you and I, right? And they still are for some of us, right? So that's the kind of love that God has bestowed upon us. That's the kind of love that our parents show to us. That's the kind of love that we want to show our children 
And not only that, that's the kind of love that Christians need to be sharing with each other in order to restore the kingdom of God here on earth. So if we have this kind of love in our hearts, all of our relationships will be well. Our human-to-human relationships, our relationship with God, can all be restored if we have love, right? Whenever we, de- whenever we deal with other people, we must do it with love, right? Not just the people that are close to you, but anybody, everybody. We have to love bring the love of Christ in all our relationships. And by so doing, we could glorify God, right? So today, as we have come upon Mother's Day, let's think about our mother's love for us that reveals God's love toward us and that also reveals the kind of love that we should be sharing with each other. If we could just remember this, I think we will make the world around us a much better place, right? So let us share this love. First, by today, by sh- You know, showing your appreciation to our parents. Not just today, but every day. But let's bring love of Christ in all of our relationships so that we could glorify God through our lives. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word that you have given to us today. As we have come upon Mother's Day, may we remember the love that our parents have bestowed upon us. And through that love, help us to know the love of Christ in our lives, Lord. Father God, help us to obey our parents in the Lord. May we be able to pray for our parents. May we be loving to our parents. And by so doing, help us to truly learn how to serve you, God. Help us to truly love our Father in heaven. Help us to truly have the love of Christ in our lives so that we could restore all of our relationships in our lives. And may we be able to bring this kind of agape love to each other so that we may be like the light and the salt of this earth. We thank you so much for all the great blessings that you have given to us. We thank you for all of our parents. Uh, We bless you, Lord, and I pray that you will enable all of our families to be strengthened in Christ so that your kingdom may be established through them. We thank you and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God the glory with our applause.